that's almost uh, one tenth, but this is now 40,000 above and beyond. So this is a massive escalation. The Washington Post is now back to publishing the faces of the dead, the catalog with photographs of the people who have gotten killed in Afghanistan. Uh, this is an absolute disaster. Uh, the U.S. animus against Karzai couldn't be greater. Uh, Karzai has now declared himself the winner of the Afghan elections with more than 50 percent. He does not need a runoff. He does not need balotage. So uh, the U.S., uh, the State Department is uh, obviously grumbling, right? There's tremendous hostility to Karzai. This is being played out inside the country. Uh, clashes with Holbrook and uh, between Holbrook and Karzai, as we've heard. So this is uh, obviously a very explosive situation. Karzai, don't become the next president DM. Don't end up in the trunk of a car uh, run by the U.S. Embassy and the, uh, and the State Department. Uh, this is an absolute uh, recipe for catastrophe. Uh, Petraeus uh, is going to testify. We've actually had testimony in front of the Congress by Admiral Mullen, the warmonger holdover head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who says, yes, uh, the situation is uh, deteriorating and serious, but we must have more forces, more commitment, more time, more money, more civilians, more everything. What is the point of this? What is the goal? Uh, nobody, nobody can tell you what the goal is. There's also, there's, there will be uh, testimony by Petraeus in the near future. Uh, there's a demand from certain uh, anti-war Democrats uh, who are now coming out of the woodwork after a long, long eclipse that McChrystal himself, the butcher McChrystal, should come before the Congress and testify along with Petraeus. But Defense Secretary Gates, the former office boy of Zbigniew Brzezinski back 30 years ago under Carter, Gates is saying, no, McChrystal does not have to come. He's busy fighting the war and so forth. Um, Biden has been cavorting around Iraq, getting shot at, right? Mortar rounds falling all around him. And Biden's line is, if the Maliki regime in Iraq wants the U.S. to leave, then the U.S. will, will leave. Uh, one ar argument made, of course, in favor of the Afghan war is that if you have a, uh, a safe haven, if you have a sanctuary for terrorists, then, uh, then al-Qaeda will use it. Well, the problem with that is, as, a, as an op-ed in the Washington Post has pointed out this week, uh, you've already got that, right? Somalia would be a great safe haven. No need to look any further. You're not going to occupy Somalia, are you, boys? And, of course, <laughs> according to the mythology of these characters, bin Laden is not in Afghanistan, but he's in Waziristan. He's in the federally administered tribal areas of Pakistan, and therefore uh, he's already out of that country. Uh, remember, the goal of the U.S. presence in Afghanistan is to push Taliban fighters into Pakistan so that they can fight a civil war and overthrow the Pakistan central government, the goal being split Pakistan into five parts. That is the goal. It is an anti-Chinese policy to prevent Pakistan from becoming ever an anti, uh, an anti, well, pro-Chinese energy corridor uh, for oil from Iran and perhaps even further in the Middle East, but from Iran principally across a pipeline up over the Himalayas and into China, that would be strategic. That would also be uh, good business. That would be peaceful trade. Who could feel threatened by that? London and, and New York and Washington, that's who. Inside the U.S., you've already got Senator Feingold wants a timetable to get out. Senator Levin of the uh, Senate uh, Armed Services Committee, also very skeptical about Afghanistan, there's no operational edge to this. Senator Feinstein, the same thing. She is uh, unhappy. A uh, lot of grumbling among the out of Iraq caucus in the uh, in the House of Representatives. Why not found an out of Afghanistan caucus against Obama, dear Democrats in the House? We'll be back in a minute. GCN Radio Network, providing the world with hard-hitting talk radio. GCN, great talk radio starts here. Welcome back to our second hour of World Crisis Radio. And, of course, in this past week, there's been news on the uh, Obama birth certificate 
front, and as I understand it, a federal judge has thrown out a suit brought by the bungling uh, Orly Tates uh, and has uh, given her a warning about filing more suits of this sort. I think this bears more on the uh, ineptitude and bungling uh, capacity of Orly Tates than it does on the merits, but uh, to get a legal uh, evaluation of this, let's go right to the source. Let's go to the founder of this entire movement, the Alpha Birther, as he's been called in the uh, in the Philadelphia press, and that would be Phil Berger, Philadelphia, who's now shepherding three uh, Obama birth certificate cases through the federal courts. Phil, welcome. Welcome. My pleasure to be on your show. And as I've stated, uh, this is now, I guess, my 14th month pursuing this, and as you know, uh, through our website, obamacrimes.com, O-B-A-M-A-C-R-I-M-E-S.com, dot C-O-M, uh, we have stayed straight and narrow. <clears throat> we're looking for the truth. We're hopefully going to do it through the court system. If not, we're trying to get the public uh, with us on this. Unfortunately, um, and uh, you know I hate to speak about another attorney, but you just brought the topic up, and the uh, judge in this case just dismissed the case that was brought by uh, Orly Tate. Um, she has r- really been, in my opinion, I said it before, and now it, it's just coming forth um, that she is really out there to hurt the movement. I don't know what her intentions are. I don't know who's paying her. I don't think she's just that inept. I'm not sure what's going on, but uh, the Georgia uh, federal judge in, in Georgia <clears throat> dismissed her case on behalf of another military person who was trying to say that they're a conscientious objector because they're not sure of the status of the president. Well, once you put conscientious objector down, the military will immediately change your status anyhow because they don't want someone in a war zone which could end up uh, affecting the men and women there, there with the intentions to fight the battle. Um, that's where you get into situations of friendly fire and other uh, crisis situations. So that's why the judge really chastised uh, mistakes for this is the second suit she just filed. And on this particular suit, it was filed first in Texas who threw it out. Then it got to Georgia because that was the uh, send-off point, I believe, and it came to the same judge that uh, threw a case out of hers like a few weeks or a month ago. And I'm not sure if you've read it. And, again, I don't like to uh, uh, come up with bad stuff, but I'm trying to get people in line and, and widen the horizons on this, get more and more people involved. But now the uh, Orly Tates has a case out in California, which there's just been a fight because – uh, Gary Krepp, K-R-E-E-P, has taken over for two of the plaintiffs in that case. <clears throat> but now it comes out that uh, at a hearing, which was going to be last week, two uh, potential witnesses for Orly Tate have publicly come out and stated that uh, they w- couldn't deal with her anymore because she has actually asked them to lie under oath uh, in that case. And there's, uh, there's articles about that. And um, I'm, I'm glad... Excuse me, I'm glad these people are speaking up. One is Larry Sinclair, another one is Lucas Smith, and um, uh, we can't have that kind of thing here. I don't know the intentions of her, but I know people have filed complaints against her to the state bar in California. But more important, that's why people should stay away from her and should stay on our thing, Obama Crimes. As you mentioned, we have three cases pending. One, we're getting closer on the Third Circuit Court of Appeals in Philadelphia for October 26th. That's the argument on the case that I originally filed before the Democratic National Convention last year, and the judge dismissed my case on standing. And as stated before, if the judge basically said, I don't have standing, Webster doesn't have standing, none of your listeners have standing, no one has standing, and perhaps in the future the Congress can decide who should have standing to attack the Constitution? Uh, that's it's just wrong. It's blatantly wrong under our, amend, the Tenth Amendment. Everything reverts back to we the people if it's not uh, conferred elsewhere on the Constitution. So, I believe we have a solid case there. I'm not sure if the Third Circuit's got guts enough to deal with this. We're dealing with some, uh, you know, there are heavy issues here. <clears throat> it, it's a it's a sad state of affairs. And um, but but the thing is, if you think about it, and for your listeners, will just think for one moment. The reason we're doing this is because Obama has not been honest uh, to the electorate in this country. He's not been honest to the people of this country. Uh, He will not divulge any information about himself. Uh, The other day was uh, Constitution Day, the 222nd anniversary of the uh, signing of the U.S. Constitution, and I basically said that um, it's shame on Obama 
on the anniversary for not living up to the Constitution. The Constitution requirement for president is only three requirements. One, be 35 years of age. Number two, live in this country for 14 years. And number three, be a natural-born citizen, which is our claim that Obama is not. But also it's interesting, someone raised the question to me a few weeks ago, how do we really know his birth date is August 4th, 1961? Because we don't have any documentation on anything about this person. Hey, right, and, you've got to be 35 years old to be president, right? That's right. And we don't know. We really don't know. I mean, because nothing, <laughs> nothing has, I mean, think about it. Nothing has been put forth except that phony document which they put on their website in June of 2008, which they keep referring to as a birth certificate, but it's not a birth certificate. But so I have that one case on standing. We have the uh, case with uh, Hollister, the retired Air Force colonel, which is on appeal to the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. But the other case, and we checked with the uh, judge's uh, office, there were.